Today I'm going to give you an insanely fast overview of Jean Haynes' book, Atmospheric Watercolours, and then I'm going to pause on this exercise about a blue circle that practices soft edges and negative painting and I'm going to finish flicking through the book and then I'm going to run you through this exercise. It's an excellent exercise as are many of the exercises in her book. It's a double page spread and there are nine steps and the ninth step is the most hilarious piece of advice that it includes and I'll uh, tell you what that is when we get up to step nine. So I'm just flicking through insanely fast so that you can see what the rest of the book is like. But if you'd like to see a complete run through of this watercolor book, I'll put a link below to my review of this book where I take a little bit more time, well, a lot more time to flick through the pages and let you have a little look. And you get to decide whether or not you want to buy this really beautiful watercolor book called Atmospheric Watercolors by Jean Haynes, who's a really extraordinary watercolor artist. So here it is. It's a double page, double page spread and it's called Exploring Control uh, and she lists the colors as blue and white but in fact she only paints with blue and white is nearly always the white of the paper. So she recommends Winsor & Newton Indigo. Uh, she tells you exactly what she's using but um, I didn't have Indigo handy and the exercise will work with any color. I had a tube of cobalt blue hue in Holbein and I wanted to use that up. So you can see on the left there I've squeezed out uh, a small amount of the blue. You really only need a small dob, you know, like about the size of a pea. And I just mixed it around with a little bit of water. There's no drawing in this exercise. Um, and what she doesn't tell you is about the angle that she paints on all the time. So that's what I was describing there with my hand uh, about the angle in which I'm going to make everything go. She does, Jean Haynes does tell you um, lots of information in this exercise, but you know, she doesn't tell you everything, like the, the angle, she doesn't point that out. I don't know why, maybe she just likes to include the, what she thinks is more important. But for me, composition is more important. So I did find some of the exercises in this book a little frustrating in that they don't discuss composition. They're always about technique, but that's cool these techniques that uh, we're running through today and I thoroughly recommend that you join me in this exercise is so simple and yet what you get out of it is really fantastic and that's all to do with soft edges and negative painting and it's incredibly easy you cannot go wrong in this exercise so I'm just continuing to add a little bit more blue hue to the uh, circle, which might end up looking a little bit like a moon or it might not. In the tips in the book, I'll just read this to you while I'm continuing to add color to the circle. She says, bleeding away color in step three is an artist term for using a wet brush to draw color from one area to another. She goes on to say soft edges describe sections that are subtle and fade into the surrounding edges uh, surrounding area hard edges are sections that are completely defined i think she's very masterful at combining soft edges and hard edges and this example is a fabulous fabulous example of exactly that so you could see there that i added more dark blue she does recommend that you tilt the page so that the paint runs in the direction of all that water that I've put down in the foreground. So I'm just holding on a, on an angle, giving it a bang on my table to encourage those drips to really fall off the bottom of the page. And then I'm painting the top half of the circle. So I've rotated my block of watercolor paper to make it easier because I'm left-handed. Naturally, if you're right-handed, which most of you will be, uh, then you will be probably rotating in the opposite direction. I don't know. I'd love to hear about your experience painting this and whether you remember sometimes to lift the page up and uh, turn it around. I'm amazed sometimes at how many times I forget. So I'm doing the same thing on the other side of the circle. I'm putting down a bit of blue and wetting around it, then coming back and adding more blue. These, I'm just purely following her steps at this point. 
and just adding and adding because the whole section where the circle is sur that surrounds the circle is very wet then I'm just adding lots and lots of water so I'm using a large mop to add all the water and I'm continuing here to add much more water uh, and make it go around the rest of the page because I wanted to fill in the rest of the page it seemed to me then in her example there was some paint all over the place um, but now that I'm looking at the example in her book I can see that in fact she left it quite simple and that's probably another exercise for me to learn is you don't have to fill the page whereas I went on to <laughs> splatter um, around it so um, in a moment you'll see me splatter because I want to fill add some texture to the white areas around that round shape which looks so much like a moon it kind of does and doesn't look like a moon anyway I'm getting my um, mop brush now and softening some of the edges towards the inside of this circle uh, she does this in step eight and she says you can encourage color from the outer blue edge of the dry circle to flow into the center by adding clean water inside the inner edge it really makes this really interesting difference when you just grab a wet brush and soften inside the um, circle like that so we're getting towards um, that was step eight is to soften the inside and while you watch me splatter around it which is not what Jean Haynes said of and I couldn't resist and you can see me there trying to get the the brush to um, let some drips go but the water isn't quite runny enough and so I just use the drumstick method to uh, splatter it and make the splatters go and then I get lots of water and soften off the little tiny drips it just satisfied me to cover the those bits of white paper Anyway, I specially said that I would tell you about step nine and her piece of advice. And she says, stop. Do not try to turn this exercise into a painting. This was merely an exercise in how we can control the flow of color by using brush strokes, placement of water and pigment, and by holding the paper at an angle. I really love that piece of advice that she finishes with. It's an exercise. Let go think of it just as an exercise and nothing more be prepared she also gives other tips in the book about be prepared to throw your exercise in the bin it's not going to be a masterpiece most of the time in fact it's not going to be a masterpiece please give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video if you've got another exercise that you'd like to see painted out i'd love to hear from you and i really appreciate you watching especially to the end bye guys see you next time